Starting on classifying chemical equations, what is it when you have a cation switching to your anion on the other side to making KCl plus iodine gas, which is a anion? You get a simple replacement reaction. Then for 1B, we have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas equaling to nitrogen, hydrogen gas. So it is going to be a combined reaction or also known as a combination reaction when you just add the two and combine it. Now for 1C, whenever we have carbon dioxide and water in our product side, we're always going to name it a combustion reaction. Very easy, right? So now moving forward, 1D, we, we have, have nitrogen gas equaling to nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Whenever you have a compound equaling to its single elements, we call that a decomposition reaction. So we are on now number two, and as you can see, it has all these instructions here about what oil rig means, but I'm just going to go ahead and break it down for you. So as you see in 2A for the first problem, um, in the question it's going to say to determine what is a reactant, um, which is oxidized and which is reduced. So we need to figure out what is oxidized and reduced species. So for 2A, we have two irons in solid form plus three sulfur in solid form equals iron two, sulfur three, solid. As we see right here in 2A, it kind of looks like 1B um, combination reaction. So something we can go off of what we learned already, but we're gonna go ahead and now say that it is um, gonna be so we're basically gonna be saying that um, your iron Fe I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there is going to lose electrons because as we see on the periodic table iron is going to be losing three electrons, so it's going to be a three plus. And since it's a three plus, it is losing electrons because it doesn't need them. And um, now we're going to say that sulfur is going to then be Fe three plus plus sulfur 2 minus. So what does that mean? Well, we have lost three, we'll say three right here, electrons, and sulfur gaining two electrons. We can say that our oxidized species, or species, um, since we know that iron loss, also acronym for oil, oxidized um, reaction of a lost electron is going to be Fe. And then for reduced species, our species, we're going to go ahead and say that since sulfur gained two electrons, um, acronym RIG. Um, a reaction, a reactant um, that is um, gaining an electron, we're going to go ahead and say it's going to be sulfur. Now for 2B, we are going to put the same thing. So we have magnesium. It's going to be adding to silver. We're going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to go ahead and then create 
a product of ag zero and magnesium two plus. So what does it mean when magnesium is two plus and silver is going to be um, basically gaining an electron and neutralizing. So we're going to go ahead and say that magnesium is losing electron and right here for silver we can say that it is gaining an electron. So what is going to be our oxidized species or species where it loses an electron? And we can say that it's going to be magnesium because whenever it has a 2 plus, it's just saying that it's going to go ahead and give it to the other element. So we're going to go ahead and say it's magnesium, Mg, and our reduced species is going to be silver because it gained an electron or being plus one, right? So since it gained an electron, it is going to be ag. Okay, my favorite part. So we are going to now go to the back of the lecture 12 and we are moving on to 3A, which is now um, converting moles to grams, uh, vice versa. So for 3A, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into it. It says, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced if 1.0 moles of um, and C6H12O6 is glucose? So we can go ahead and say that's glucose. It's good to memorize um, chemical names and um, continue we're gonna say that glucose is reacted with an excess of O2 so how many moles let's go and underline moles of carbon dioxide so that is what we need question mark is produced from 1.0 of glucose let's go ahead and write 1.0 moles MOL for short of C6H12O6 times. So when finding conversion factors, I just look at the chemical equation that is given in the very top. And we see that for every glucose, there is how many moles of carbon dioxide? Six. So for one mole of glucose, oh six, sorry about that, we have six moles of carbon dioxide. And we are now going to get that as 6.0 moles of carbon dioxide dioxide and don't forget to box your answer. So now moving on to 3C, we have a can of soda has 39 grams of glucose. How many grams of oxygen are needed to fully react with it? So what is um, needed? You're trying to find grams of glucose or grams of oxygen, excuse me. So we can go ahead and do that and write a question mark. So grams of oxygen is needed. And we start off with 39 grams of glucose. So that is what is given, right? So how are we gonna set this up? What I like to do is for um, problems like this, starting off with grams, of course, um, and needing to go back to grams, um, I like to um, use the gram to mole to gram method, especially when we have the um, chemical uh, equation 
given to us so we can use like the moles to convert to um, grams again. So for this one, we're gonna definitely need um, the mass of glucose um, and also the mass of oxygen. Since we are given the grams of those, we're gonna need to get the mass. So I already wrote it here for you. So we have C, H, and O, which is gonna be for glucose. We have C6, we have H12, and we have O6. And for the final um, gram of that, we have 180.18 grams per mole of glucose, which is gonna be our conversion factor that we're gonna need. We start off with the given. So 39 grams of glucose, we times it by one mole of glucose, over 180.18 grams of glucose, which is what we did right here on the side, getting the um, conversion factor right here. We're gonna go ahead and times that by six moles of oxygen. See how we got six moles of oxygen? Right here. And then we're going to go ahead and um, use one mole of glucose because right here, since there's like nothing right here, doesn't mean that it's just zero, it means that there is one. So we're going to go ahead and put one mole of glucose. And then we're going to go ahead and times it, since we need how many grams of oxygen, we're going to go ahead and times it by the conversion factor of one mole of oxygen. And remember, it has an O2, right? So O2, we know that since it's 16, we do 16 times two, not six, but times two, and we're gonna get 32 grams of oxygen gas, right? And what does that equal to? Well, it equals to 41.56 grams which is what we need. We needed the grams of oxygen and we get to the simple form of 42 grams of oxygen gas. And don't forget to box your answer. So for 3D we have the reaction was carried out and it was determined that 1.20 grams of water was produced. So how many grams, here we go, Question, how many grams of glucose were burned? Question mark. So we know that we start off with 1.20 as a given grams of water was produced. So we want to go from grams again to grams of glucose. Grams of water to glucose. So we're gonna do the whole gram to mole to gram method again using the same equation on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So 1.20 grams of water, which is a given in the, right here. Uh, one mole of water. And here we needed to get the um, mass of um, water, which I already did on the side. So H2O, H, hydrogen, um, times two. So I got the mass and it's 2.02. .02. Oxygen, since um, there's only one oxygen in water. Um, so it's 16.00 times one. We get 18.02 when we add both of them up. And that is what we're gonna use for our um, conversion. So we're going to go ahead and use that 18.02 grams of water to one mole of glucose and um, we got the one mole of glucose from up here just using the same one. One mole of glucose to six moles of water. How do we get that? There is six moles of water right here. Anytime there's a coefficient, we're already talking about the moles. And then we're gonna times it, and 
again getting or wanting to get the grams of glucose right. So we're just going to use the 180.18 from previous problem and 3C and we're going to put that over one mole of glucose so that mole and mole of glucose can cancel out. Giving us, giving us 1.99 grams of glucose and we need to obey the sig fig rule of 1.20 which is three sig figs so we're going to go ahead and round it since we have 1.99 equaling to 2.00 grams of glucose